Bueno, pues buenos días a todos. Eh... Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Apologies, I don't actually have a PowerPoint because I was asked to speak a month ago, but until only three days ago, they told me what I had to talk about when I was talking to secondary waste. In the past, we talked about reject, we talked about all different labels, but now we're talking about secondary waste. So, um, I therefore I'm going to improvise today. I'm going to talk about what I know because I've been working in this field for many years. Now, I've, we've heard about this over the recent days, but I'm going to look at waste management in specific areas. Mm, I hope I will have time to express the message that I want to convey. Well, for me, and so much has been written about waste. Mm, and we have this great morass of articles, publications, but residue, waste and consumption, I cannot separate the two. If we look at UN data for 2011, which have been, I think, recently published, we look at these figures, well, the latest figures are from 2011, and they say that this planet is consuming 60 billion tons of natural resources every year. And by 2020, we're going to consume 100 billion by 2050. 2050, we will be consuming 120 billion tons of natural resources. And these uh, figures from various different sources, they said that between 87 and 93% of consumption of natural resources will be be converted into waste. So if an alien came to this planet and they they would be the only people that could actually do anything with all these vast mountains, mountains of waste. So what we have on this planet is an enormous mountain of waste. From an environmental point of view, it's really impossible for us to comprehend. In Spain we spend so much money, there's so much legislation, there's so much energy with so few results. And in this field of legislation the rules are breached so often and even though in 1987 we had our first waste management plan and then we based our studies on Germany, how they collected waste and how they sorted. We implemented all these different plans, but we breached these plans so often. Now, the Environment Ministry just doesn't actually do anything about this. On its website, it does not provide us with an estimate of the amount of waste that is produced in Spain. Mm, I've read the papers, national papers, international papers, and there is a shocking lack of data on waste generation in this country. Mm. L latest estimates come from 2013, 2014, and according to these estimates, the amount has fallen slightly. And compared to 2010, we had about a billion tons, and this had fallen to about 800 billion tons of waste. And these are estimates, basically. Obviously, we don't have reliable figures, so we're only offering estimates because we don't have reliable figures. And looking at these estimates, I work in this field, and when we talk about waste, we don't actually refer to 
the sum total, we don't look at wastewater, we don't look at the gases that we release, we don't look at everything. And quite simply, at this juncture, we have technological advances, but we simply, we, we, can, we can look to the furthest reaches of the universe with our telescopes, but we simply don't have a way to calculate fully everything that we reject into our atmosphere, and we simply cannot come up with the right processing system so that we can restore the natural balance. Mm. So, we only, uh, we, if we only look at gas, or we, uh, apart from solid waste and liquid waste, we are not going to have a global overview. Therefore, we need some kind of holistic approach. We, n we can't weigh, uh, for example, light pollution, atmospheric pollution. We cannot weigh uh, radioactive pollution. We don't have this global overview. Now, I've been working here in Tenerife. I directed the very first integrated plan for the maximization of waste resources on the island of La Palma. And the policy there for light pollution reduction was useful at this time because we reduced light below a certain luminosity. And if you go up to the top of the mountain, there is very little light pollution. This therefore improves our environment, uh, vegetation, the night sky, and so on and so forth. This is useful regulation. So light pollution is also a kind of waste at the same time. But we don't have a uh, all-purpose unit that allows us to measure the macro generation of elements that we emit into the environment on a daily basis. And the environment cannot deal with all these different types and streams of waste. So we look at the different waste flows that have been processed and treated and so on and so forth. I asked, what are we talking about precisely? Mm, what are we talking about? Overall waste. But there are more considerations. We need to be able to search for alternatives, but we always return to the hierarchy of waste, which was laid down for us by the European Union a few years ago. First of all, yeah. prevention, avoidance. Next, reuse. Then we need to make good use in incinerator plants, energy production. Mm. And we have the incineration plant. And then we finally have the landfills at the end of the day for that waste that has not been reduced, reused or recycled. These are the leftover fractions which should be negligible in their number. Now, if we look at the Canary Islands, um, I set up a plan for Lanzarote to, this was a very comprehensive plan. The most comprehensive plan was one for La Palma, the island of El Hierro. We also set up the ECHO plan for the island of La Gomera. So we need to bring together environment and economy because these are indivisible. And in the Canary Islands, we have a desertifying uh, region. Lanzarote and Fuerteventura are virtually deserts. And if we look at mainland Spain, more than a third is undergoing a process of desertification. In fact, Spain asked the UN agency against erosion and desertification of this planet. They asked them for assistance because in Spain we have a huge problem with organic loss of organic material in our soil. Germany, Sweden or Finland, they can have five or six percent organic material below two meters underground. But this is something we don't have here in these islands. Therefore, in these other countries, they don't worry so much about the reuse of organic materials as much as we should concern ourselves with the reuse of organic materials. And I saw this when I helped draw up the plans for the different islands because we did not have this concern for organic materials. I also worked with the Azores Islands to draw up a plan there. And we, we worked with the island of Santander in Cap Verde 
Now, this is an island that has very little organic material in its soil, none at all. So they need to import organic material. In the Canary Islands, we are importing mineral uh, fertilizing compounds, but there is a capacity to process organic materials here, and this is a complementary process because we have pruning, uh, we have organic waste, we have food waste, we have leftovers from industrial processes. Mm, therefore, we need to level out the nitrogen and carbon emissions. We need to incorporate this into our processes here. And this needs to be decisive in the Canary Islands, not only because the law obliges us to collect organic waste, but because we should be converting this into compost because our soil is losing its organic uh, contents. Therefore, this is an obligation for us. So um, we need to look at organic waste. We need to look at whether something's biodegradable or not. But we also need to put a stop to any thoughts of incinerating anything because we need to look at what is there for us. What could be transformed into compost? What is biodegradable? So. Well, I've run out of time, so I can't express any further opinions. <laughs> so, to draw this to a close, I'd like to give thanks to the person who spoke about the incineration plants earlier. But the speaker didn't actually say that incineration of furans and dioxins was something that the World Health Organization advised us that this was most hazardous to humans, the emission of these elements. Now, the tiny, tiniest amount is highly toxic. And to date, we only had one scientific laboratory, and this is in Barcelona, that was capable of analyzing this amount of dioxins in the atmosphere. And the only legal assessment that we had for eight and a half years was the uh, legal assessment office in Madrid. And they have been researching furan and dioxin emissions due to a complaint from the community of Madrid. And after eight and a half years of study, they discovered that emissions from the most modern incinerator plant in Spain, Japanese technology, 400,000 tons, uh, German machinery, and we discovered because of a complaint that arose from an independent analysis from the community of Madrid, they discovered through 16 different measurements that 1,004, they were emitting 1,400% what should be emitted. Now, Soprona, which worked alongside the, the, the local enforcement uh, forces, and they went and inspected the facilities. So there was a legal proceeding. Eight and a half years went by. Spain signed the Stockholm Agreement to reduce dark sensitive furanes not only what was released from waste management, but from also from paper factories and, and, and many different industrial processes. And Spain signed and ratified, signed and ratified the Stockholm Agreement in 2001. And through this technical assessment, we saw that the data obtained by the town council in Madrid were not viable whatsoever. They did not take into consideration any of the key requirements for this type of analysis. So, eight and a half years of study, a work of eight and a half years, finally was filed by the judge in Court 35 in Madrid, and they replaced competence for environmental affairs. And therefore, this was completely swept under the carpet. So when we talk about secondary treatment, we need to 
take the right approach. We need to do things well. We need to do things well. And to repeat, there's only one laboratory that was able to analyze dioxins. This was in Barcelona. And each sample cost a thousand euros, the preparation, transporting, analysis. So it was highly costly, and we had to send various different samples, 10, 12 samples, to this laboratory. So when we talk about incineration, that's what we need to bear in mind. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much.